something was probably telling me get out of that room and I got I finally get out of the room and he follows me out and I can remember patting he was patting my head uh, I, he later told me he was still putting some fire out that my hair was still burning the skin on my face had basically burned off uh, lost parts of my ear ears there was actually metal impaled in my teeth. When I looked back and saw that I had no pants on the back of my legs, and literally the skin was hanging off my arms and my legs, I just, I just knew something horrific had happened. Electricity is an essential part of our lives. It lights our homes and powers our industries. We rely on electricity every day. Electricians and other workers who install and maintain electrical power systems and equipment make this all possible. These workers are at risk for electrical injury on a daily basis. In industries like construction and mining, for example, electrical incidents are a leading cause of fatal injuries on the job. Shock is one of the more obvious risks in electrical work. But a hazard that sometimes goes unrecognized is the danger from an arc flash. An arc flash can occur while working on an energized circuit or from an electrical equipment failure. When an arc flash occurs, workers can suffer serious burns and other injuries. Such injuries may require months of painful recovery result in permanent disability, or even be fatal. You are about to hear the personal stories of three experienced electricians who were injured in two separate arc flash incidents. They will recount the sudden and destructive power of an arc flash and will discuss how these events affected their lives. My story begins in 1995, in the spring of 1995 in May. And we were to show up at a building and perform a preventative maintenance on some switch gear. And we arrived at the job site about seven o'clock that morning. And we got together, the two other gentlemen and myself got together and discussed what tasks we had to perform. One of the tasks to be performed was to change a disconnect out in one of the panels. So I was standing in the front of the one compartment and I said, well, I'll change out this disconnect. And John was to my right and Scott was to my left. And John was gonna proceed tightening the load wires of the disconnects in the panel that he was in. And Scott was gonna do the ones that he was in to the left. And when I got to one of the switches, which was still energized on the line side, when I shut that disconnect door, that's when the incident started. It was so fast, it was unbelievable. The, the room was as bright as it could be right now, uh, horrific noises. Uh, humming, banging, uh, just molten metal flying everywhere. I sort of remember that. Um, I can remember it. I can remember it being right in front of me. I believe I got blown back and there was a wall not too far away. So there wasn't too much room that I could go back. Maybe three feet, I hit a wall and I went straight down. Uh, Luckily, one of the workers was walking out the door for something. That, you know, I'm not even sure what he was doing, getting another extension cord or whatever. He was lucky enough just to scamper out of the room when this happened, so he didn't get uh, burned at all. My working partner, however, he did uh, eventually get burned, but the, the incident happened right in front of me. Uh, and I went down. He was not in front of the, the actual arc, 
but he did turn around and to come and lift me up. And as he was lifting me up and this gear is still arcing and melting down, this is when he received burns on, on his backside and the back of his legs and the back of his arms as he was trying to pick me up. I remember I was bending down to pick up the disconnect and I could see his motion of him closing the door. And when he closed the door, it was just a horrific explosion. I mean, the ball of fire and, and the noise, the, mo the noise was so deafening that it was just like, like somebody was in there with shotguns just shooting at you. As it turns out, as a result uh, of the uh, incident, I received burns over 58% of my body. Uh, the worst burns were from my fingertips up, up to my elbows. While I was under in the hospital, they had uh, did skin grafts to my arms through my fingers. Uh, luckily, I had enough skin left, although it was close from what I heard, to, to do my arms. They took skin from my midsection. Uh, they would have liked to uh, did skin grafts to my legs but I didn't have enough skin and it was borderline and they, they thought maybe there were a couple areas that probably could have used them on my legs. Pretty much as I laid there in the hospital and, and finally started realizing what happened, I mean, there wasn't too much of my body that I, I that was not burned. Uh, some places were better than others, but I can remember being, at, at the time I had garments on, on my arms, sort of, this is like the, maybe the first time that I, I woke up and was conscious and, and just couldn't believe that the total coverage of the, in, uh, the injuries. Uh, my legs, both legs, both arms, my back, there's a, there's a patch on my back that got burnt pretty good my face and my ears. My ears were pretty bad. Um, I like to tell everyone they look like uh, if you leave a marshmallow in a campfire too long. That's sort of what my, my ears look like. Uh, they would actually, when I would lay in the bed in the hospital, and if my ears would touch the pillow, they would, they would almost stick to the pillow. I can remember not being able to move my head because both of my ears were stuck to the, the pillow. I'm here to tell you that uh, this accident is one that can't happen to you. I'm not here to scare you. I'm not here to try to talk you out being an electrician. I'm going to retire as an electrician. Uh, my son has started the program. Uh, I constantly talk to him about what's going on, what can happen. I can't talk to every electrician out there what can happen but maybe this message here will get to a lot of you. I would say the, the, the biggest way it's changed, it, it's, it's in my attitude. It's, it's trying to expect the unexpected. Um, it's, it's being ready for anything because anything may happen. Um, with what we do, we're, we're more at risk uh, of something like that happening than maybe anybody else that would be walking down the street or maybe you, you, you know, whatever you do in your profession, we may be more um, suspect to those freak, freakish kind of accidents that happen. It's kind of funny. Uh, my, when I was in the hospital recovering, when I was well enough to speak and see people, every electrician that I talked to had their own little arc story that they've lived through. A lot of them were uh, harmless, uh, you know, injury free. However, they were arcing incidents and well could have been, you know, cause of an injury. It's amazing uh, how many 
a very high percentage. Uh, you'd probably be hard pressed to talk to an electrician that never was exposed to an arc that he had caused or, or was around. Uh, we as electricians should know this and, and be ready for it. It's going to happen. What are you going to be like when it happens? What are you going to have on your body when it happens? What are you going to have over your eyes when it happens? Uh, we may not stop them from happening, but we can stop them from hurting you. June 1997, 1997 uh, was requested to go uh, to Bronzeville Elementary School. Uh, met my partner uh, at a bus stop, a park and ride. And we went in one vehicle, went in a company vehicle out to the job site. It took us about an hour to get there. It was a pleasant morning. We got to the job site. What we're going to do is uh, check to see if the uh, hardware would let us adapt new buckets to old switchgear. Uh, this switchgear was in a uh, revamped boiler room, uh, clean atmosphere, but uh, the boilers had been removed and upon inspection when we removed the side panels on the switch gear, the, uh, I could see that there was a old film across the buses and uh, pretty good indication that all the paint on the outside didn't help what was inside. But this switch gear, uh, there was quite a few switches and it was defective and the, the intent here was to uh, order new buckets to be installed. Being the manufacturer, the original manufacturer was no longer in business. This was a retrofit, and it was just a matter of seeing if the connecting hardware uh, was going to line up. I decided that I was going to uh, see if I could safely disengage a bucket and uh, see if we could get the hardware to match up. My partner went out to the uh, vehicle to get something, and in the meantime, I was, uh, I disconnected. I was, I was able to reach in and work around this switch rather comfortably. I disconnected the switch electrically and mechanically, and I was attempting to remove it from the switch gear when uh, the accident occurred. The uh, it had arced over and it, uh, there was a flash, brightest light I ever saw in my life. The noise was deafening and uh, I probably blacked out for, I, I have no idea how long, seconds, it couldn't have, couldn't have been, it couldn't have been more than a minute, but uh, regaining my composure, I, I looked at myself and I saw that uh, I'd been burned pretty severely, I had skin hanging from my ears and from my arms, my chest. Um, 
I was able to walk out of the building, met my partner who was coming in, and uh, he, he was just aghast. He just didn't, uh, couldn't believe it because it, it, this is just a matter of seconds, basically, from, it was hardly any time from the last time I saw him till I saw him again, and he, he just looking at me like, He was uh, probably more upset than I was because I was in shock. Uh, decided that he should drive me over to the hospital rather than waiting for emergency help because the hospital was so close. We did that, went to Bronzeville uh, Hospital and uh, the decision was made to uh, send me down to uh, West Penn Hospital burn unit, which interestingly enough, I was instrumental in wiring. So, uh, two things that uh, I never really got to enjoy was the, the helicopter ride, because I was out and the burn unit never really did see the inside of it because I was, I was uh, more or less in a coma the whole the whole time, and that coma was induced. It, it, I was out for five weeks. The skin on my face had basically burned off, uh, lost parts of my ear, ears. There was actually metal impaled in my teeth. So, yeah, like spears. Uh, my arms were burnt from where my sleeves, I had a short sleeve shirt on. So we're under the short sleeves, my arms were burnt. Uh, my neck was burnt. I had a hard hat on, had safety glasses on, and essentially that was about as far as it went. Power should have been shut off, plain and simple. I made a very costly error by not insisting that the power was turned off. And uh, as a result, uh, I came very close to dying. I had uh, acute respiratory distress from the smoke that I had inhaled. And uh, that was probably the, the biggest thing that they had to work with or on. And uh, I'd have to say that <clears throat> my family didn't deserve that mistake that I made. Ag again, I'm, I'll just reiterate, if you could actually see this light and explosion that takes place and the devastation after the fact, if you could see that, if you could witness that, You'd never work on anything that was hot. Part of what happened to me was because of my own ego, because I'd done it so many times that, like I said, you, you get the feeling that you're infallible. And uh, you find out that uh, you're just skin and bones. <laughs> I've, I was never complacent. I mean, I, always very careful. Always very careful, but my fault. It was my fault because, in retrospect, I made that decision to work on it hot. 
your life has to be just as important as everyone else that someone's asking you to work on that hot. Okay, to what inconvenience could that be to being in a hospital for nine months? What's the, what, was it worth it? Yeah. When it comes to working on uh, live circuits, live equipment, you really do have a choice. You don't, you don't have to work on energized equipment. It can be shut off. You're just too important. Think of your family. Think of your family. It's important to recognize that much uh, that can be done to prevent uh, arc flash events are beyond the control of the individual who may be at risk of injury. Uh, today we have the, the tools and technology to, to analyze the workplace, to identify arc flash hazards. Uh, we can use that, uh, that, those tools and knowledge to uh, better engineer facilities from the very beginning. Uh, to uh, better engineer facilities if, if we're retrofitting or renovating a facility so that we reduce uh, arc flash hazards either in magnitude or in frequency. Uh, it's important that the commitment to manage this hazard be visible at the very top of an organization. The management must demonstrate the commitment to um, provide a safe work environment and apply that commitment to the unique hazards of electric arc flash. Uh, engineers that do the design uh, of, the, of the facility, of the processes, of, of uh, work practices uh, can uh, bring uh, added value to pre uh, preventing these, these events from happening. Uh, partnerships with the equipment suppliers uh, that can bring innovative technology to, uh, uh, to both from, a, say, an industrial switchgear or commercial switchgear as well as in the tools and protective clothing that uh, people use on a daily, daily basis. The safety professionals uh, have a, a really a very important role in co coaching the organization, management, as well as workers in, in uh, keeping the workplace safe. And I think the more that the safety professionals understand about Arc Flash, they'll be able to apply their expertise in uh, hazard control measures again to the unique hazard of electric arc flash. Uh, trainers and educators, whether they're in-house or, or people that you may contract with to provide those services to you, we need to make sure that they're knowledgeable and up to speed with uh, current uh, state-of-the-art knowledge on arc flash hazards uh, as well as electric shock so that uh, we're training and teaching people uh, you know, the best we know how. Uh, I think lastly, the, the worker, the person at risk, uh, again, having had the training and education provided, having had the tools and protective clothing provided, uh, need to really make a commitment to, to use that knowledge, to use those tools, to use that personal protective equipment every day uh, to watch out for their coworkers, make sure they're doing that too. Your safety depends upon all electrical work being carefully planned and carried out. The safest way to work on an electrical circuit is to de-energize, lock out, and then verify that the circuit is de-energized. It's important to follow recommended safe work practices and use proper tools and equipment in addition to appropriate PPE. The decision to work safely is yours. The choices you make can save your life.